All right. So we are live uh, again. So tonight we had another webinar. We had a successful webinar. And what I tell you, uh, my, my other webinar last week, it completely failed. It completely crapped out on me. I had a, uh, I was updating something in my, my website and it didn't update all the way and it broke the website. I couldn't log in, I couldn't do anything to it. So I had to pay GoDaddy to actually go in and fix it for me. And they, they brought it, they, you know, they, fi they fixed that. Uh, don't ask me how I know. It's just, it would just take a little bit of time for me to explain it to you. Don't worry about it. I want to talk about a, I get, I get into these like, I get into these like, um, these moods where I go around and I start asking people about what is your favorite quote of all time? You know, and I just ask people randomly all these things. And uh, look at these two amazing people that came on here. Shumela and the Logo Lady. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Logo. How are you? Hello, Logo. How are you? It's a new word. So, hey, no talking in the chat while I'm here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> just talk about me on my Facebook Live. They'll be talking amongst yourselves. So uh, anyway, I get on these kicks where I start asking people, what's your favorite quote of all time? Because there's some things, uh, there's something about quotes when you get, when people get on them and they just like, you know, it's my favorite quote of all time. And I have one that's like really, really long, but, uh, but one that I heard just recently was uh, the pen and the paper never forget. And I said, that is awesome because it's so true. I, I was actually going through my notes on my webinar before and, um, and, and I'm trying not to I see I break my attention. Katie, you just break my attention when I'm trying to do my own Facebook live. You're embarrassing me in front of everybody. All right. So anyway, I like I was going through my notes and I had um I was go I was just like passing through them and I came across my notes from uh, uh January of 2017 and it was when Peter Vaughn actually got um, onto the hangout. It's when um, yo from in oh, I thought, at first I thought that said yo from India. I'm like yo from India. I thought you were in Indiana. Oh man. But um, but yeah, Peter Vaughn actually came on to our our workshop, and he was giving all sorts of like awesome quotes, and we were writing notes like so fast we couldn't you know oh man. And he was talking about 10 reasons why leaders fail and their team fails. And so that's what I want to talk about this uh, in this in this Facebook Live. I'm going to go over those 10 points, 10 reasons why leaders fail, why, why their team just fails. And the first one is um, uh, leaders, they don't understand their own uniqueness and um, that there is a world of of hurting people out there that are just waiting for a team of people, a team of leaders to just go out there and make a huge impact on them. So, um, so the, so that's the first one is that they do, uh, leaders just do not understand their own uniqueness. The second one is that leaders do not understand their role versus their identity. Uh, you can change who you are. 95% of people do not change uh, who they are after 25 years old. So after 25 years old, the majority of people just do not change. Uh, they look, they're looking for some kind of comfort. They're looking for some kind of, you know, they want to hang on to something for the rest of their life and all that sort of thing. So, so, um, so hey, Chris. Hey, Joshua. Great to see you. Hey mom, hi mom, I'm on TV, so <laughs> I'm on Facebook. All right, so you can change your roles, uh, but we can't change our identity. All right, so third reason why leaders fail and why their teams fail 
is that they don't understand the difference between confidence and self-confidence. Self-confidence is belief in ourselves and what we think of ourselves. If I have an electrical problem inside of my house, if I have an electrical problem inside of my workplace, if I have some kind of electrical issue, you know, I've been doing this for six years, I have self-confidence that I can fix that problem. I can go over to it and I can probably pick it out really quickly because I've been in this industry for six years. You know, so I, I have no issues with that. Confidence comes from experience and you have done it before. See, that's a big difference. Uh, they know uh, you have made a difference. Okay, so the difference between confidence and self-confidence. Confidence is experience. You've had it, you've, you've solved that in the past. Confidence comes from experience. Self-confidence is that you're going into an experience and you haven't seen it before, but you say, well, let's just figure it out. That's a big thing. Hey, Morimoto. How are we doing? Great to be here. Great, great, great. I'm like, ah, great to be here. Great to have you on this live. Great to see you, man. So that's the difference, you know. And if you think about that, you know, I want to keep, I want to keep spitting this out. I feel like I should keep saying it again. Is that you've got, you've got confidence. You have self-confidence. Confidence comes from the past. Confidence comes from I solved that problem. Self-confidence says I'm going to solve the next problem. You haven't been to that problem. Yet. You don't know what to expect. You don't know what's going to happen. So you just jump into it. Hey, Lizzie. Hey, Nettie. Oh, you have a beautiful grandbaby. I love seeing his pictures. He's, he's really cute. Makes me want to go just like hug my my uh, my my nieces. Uh, sometimes confidence comes from just by jumping in. That's actually self confidence. It's like you see it, you've seen it in the past, and you say, "I'm just. I believe I can just jump into that." And confidence is like my experience says I can do. You know, I can go back and, and tackle the same thing before which I believe it is a gift from God. It is, it is a form of comfort that God gives us. Mm, but he is the ultimate comforter, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You gain confidence by doing things over and over and over again. You know, if the key doesn't work, try another one. Oh, I love that quote. See, we're talk we, we were talking about quotes, and that is a Peter Vaughn quote right there. And Peter Vaughn is just like, snap, that was awesome. See, you don't even have to go back to your notes. You know, you workshop warriors, you're like, oh, I'm going to go back to my notes. You don't have to. I already got them all right here. So you can just watch the video over and over and over again. So Bruce Lawson, I don't know if that's junior or senior, but glad to have you here. <laughs> it's probably senior because he's never had a profile picture. Well, I didn't mean to say that on Facebook, you know, but I'm glad you're here, man. I love seeing you. Uh, you can kick me at church, you know, you can smack me off the back of the head. I won't say anything. Or you can just have the whole security team just like jump me in practice, you know. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, I love this quote, you know. We, we talked about great quotes. In, in, um, you gain confidence by doing things over and over and over again. If the key doesn't work, try another one. You know, that is such a, that is such a really powerful quote. If the key doesn't work, try another one. Uh, Success Leaves Footprints uh, by uh, you know, Napoleon Hill. Uh, I don't know if Napoleon Hill said that. I actually have uh, uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. I haven't read that book yet, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's a really good one. Um... Oh yeah, he had this um, this identity, and then this roles you play in life, and then you had to like figure out uh, what do you rate yourself as. And I rated myself as like a five out of ten. And you would go through um, these like six or seven things, you know, uh, rate what you are as a person, and I wrote, I am a friend, I am a son, I am a brother, I am a cousin, I am an employee, a, foot, a photographer, a driven entrepreneur, and I am a Christian. And then you rate yourself compared to all of them, and then you add it all up, and then you divide it. It came out to like the same exact number that I thought myself, I thought myself was. And I was like, wow, that's like so, that's amazing. Mama says I'm a 10. Mama always is. 
Um, mama's always right. All right. So uh, number four, um, I have to start charging people for all this humor. You know, just sucking the life out of me. All right. So number four, why most leaders fail. Uh, most leaders never deal with their past. Meh. You want to talk about that's that is a huge, huge one right there. How many leaders have you seen that you can see it on their face? You can just walk right past somebody and know that you know whatever's in the past happened, and they're they're just moving forward. But you can almost see. I I know I I have worked in, and I, and I and I still see it to this day. The leaders that I work with, uh, that are in the company that I've been working with, that they actually have these anchors like on their soul, and they're just—you can tell that they have not dealt with the past at all. That they're just dragging those thoughts with them, and they're, man, they're like ten years away from retiring or something. It's like no way, no way. Hey, Brianna. Awesome to have you here. Hey, Jazz. I didn't even see you. You, like, popped in. and I didn't even see the notification. So we're having all these amazing people on this um, on this little hangout. I keep calling it a hangout. I call it a webinar. I'm like, it's a Facebook Live. That's what it is. That's what it is. All right. So most leaders, number four, most leaders never deal with their past. You know, uh, forgive the people who have hurt you. Okay, so this is my personal definition of forgiveness. I was actually praying about this because I had no real definition of forgiveness. And I actually, I, it was like I, I said it in my head and then like the, the word came like right there. And it was actually, I was watching a commercial to a TV, uh, a commercial for some, you know, I think it was like Serve Pro or whatever, some like restoration business. And the logo of that company says, like, it never even happened. And I made that connection just like that. I, I was like, Lord, what's forgiveness? Like, it never even happened. That's what that is. And, it, like, the connection just, like, made perfect sense. Because that's how you have to treat people. That's how, that, that is exactly what forgiveness is. You must treat people like it never even happened. That's how you can show that person that you truly forgive them. Man, it hurts people. Oh, too bad. You got to treat people like it never even happened. And if they don't accept that, and if they don't want it, if they don't want any of that in, in their life, and they're always going to be a source of, like, they're, they're going to keep living in that debt mindset, bringing you down and all that, you, you got to get You got to get away from those people. I can say it from experience. You have to get away from those kind of people. Uh, when you treat them like it never even happened, you will be invincible, right? You know, you will light their minds on fire. You will literally light people. You want to light people on fire? Be nice to them. Be be loving to them. You know, be, treat them like they treat them like they were like perfect people, and just give them like like they were uh, like they were perfect. You know, that's what you got to do. Night, mom. Good night. Good night. Um. So. Um, Pain and hurt has everything to do with business. So deal with your past. Deal with your past. When you start seeing yourself as special, as a special, unique person, your whole world will change. Absolutely. When you start believing that you have tremendous uh, value to the world around you, you will make an impact on people's lives. You will. You will make an impact on people. How many times are you going to hear this, like, you know, you're going to get to the, they get to the end of their life, and then all of a sudden they're like, well, what did I do with my life? You know, how did, they're going to think about, like, the people that they made an impact on, you know? They, they think, they're, they're going to be thinking about who in the world did they uh, help, you know? You, oh, man, another great quote from Peter Vaughn is, you are not a garbage can. You are not a garbage can. So do not fill your mind with garbage. Do not fill, do not let other people fill your mind with garbage. That is, that's huge, man. You are not a garbage can, right? You know what I'm saying? See, you know what I'm saying. 
All the weird people, they know exactly what I'm saying. All right, so number five. This is how I get rid of, you know, people who don't really, they want to do business with me. I'll just be myself. What do you think? All right, so number five, right? They don't understand motivation. This is a really big, I got, quote, I got this big sign right here. It says, this is very big. Leaders who fail do not know what to do. There's no game plan. They, uh, they don't know how to do it. This is how they fail. And yeah, something or somebody is preventing uh, them from their role. And like it, like I said, it could be just somewhere in the past. There, there could be something in the past that is just literally anchored into people's hearts and minds. I have known people um, who they just like, like, even though their father had passed away, they were still like they had that anchor of like his words, his thoughts, his abuse. They're just like really holding this person back like the whole time. Uh, I, I could see the pain on their face. I could see it in their mind. I could see it like in their cautious behavior. It was just holding them back. And that's why they were failing in relationships. That's why they were failing in their purpose. They didn't understand why they were getting up in the morning. They had no clue. They had no idea. So this is why leaders fail. It's because they allow the wrong people to tell them what to do and they say, oh, you're doing that, you're right. I should be just doing doing it that way, right? I should be thinking like myself is just a, a loser, right? Yeah, I think you're right about that. All right, so, uh, so they don't understand their motivation. Employee checklist, um, having, an, having an employee checklist, what are their responsibilities? What are my responsibilities and how do I do these? It kind of like is almost funny to think of it like that. Like what are their responsibilities? It's, it seems so like, you know, you think leaders would just know this, but this is one of the reasons why, you know, 90% of businesses just flat out fail. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to tell people, okay, this is what you're going to do. And um, uh, you pick it up one I'm putting down home slice. Man, see, this is why we do these webinars. I see again, again. I said webinar. It's Facebook. So ten uh, motivations that will drive us. Right. Wait a minute. I'm trying to like figure out how did I wait. I got his. You know, we got ten. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know what happened? I think. I stopped num. I think that's what happened. I think I stopped numbering them because I was writing so incredibly fast. Uh, I was trying to write fast and keep up with Peter because he was just like spitting out all sorts of information. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we got five. Uh, I think number six was the employee checklist. Uh, uh, what are my responsibilities and how do I do this? And then we got to think about uh, ten motivations that will drive us. Okay. And I don't have, I can't really separate where the other ones are because I just kept writing. So we're just going to keep going. What do you think motivates people? Right? What do you think motivates people? What do you think motivates people? People do what's important for themselves. So you've got to discover what they want. How to win friends and influence people. It's all about figuring out what the other person wants. And then showing them how to get it. There is no sales tactic in the world out there that's going to force somebody to buy a Jeep. Nobody. There's not a, there's, there's not, and I said the word Jeep, as in like a Jeep Rubicon. Nobody is going to be able to, like if somebody just doesn't feel safe in a Jeep, you know, with like the, you know, with like the helicopter wings like on it they're not wings but it, what is that helicopter blades on it that's the one i want and it can also go in the water turn into a submarine you know and nobody's gonna nobody's gonna want that except me so like it, it, am i gonna try and force somebody else to buy that no because they don't want that but i want that i want to you know i just want to have fun so that's um and <laughs> that's really true 
Uh, so where, where's my notes? Where's my notes? Where's it? Okay, so what motivates people? What what is important? What is important for them? What is important for them? Right? They don't understand the business model. The purpose of a business is to acquire customers. Right? You got a you got a business. You got to acquire customers. You, you you need customers whether it's on the internet, whether it's on a brick and mortar business. You know, it, it the percentages of failure is the same on the internet uh, versus uh, versus out there in the real world because you have the same people out there in brick and mortar businesses and the same people in uh, on the internet. They're just going around doing the same exact thing. Ninety percent get it, uh, uh, don't get it out in the real uh, out in the brick and mortar world, and then ninety percent just don't get it here. Uh, on the internet because they're not applying business principles. They just don't understand the business model, right? I had people tell me to my face that, like, I'll never be a businessman. I'm too stupid to do anything like that. Really? Okay. So, all right. See, all right. So, uh, so in the business world online, you have got to get customers, right? You got to get leads, and those leads can be in the form of emails it could be in the form of messenger facebook messenger contacts that could be anything that is communicating directly to uh, your customers wants desires you've got to find people who want to model what you're doing you got to find people who just want to model exactly what you're doing right yeah law of numbers yeah people don't change so you, you can just kind of look at it and go it is a Weird, weird thing to me. A lot of numbers. I don't even want to get it. That's a rabbit trail. I, I, I don't want to even go down that number. Um, all right. So if you want to be successful in business, serve the people. Look at the people and just say to yourself, okay, these people have got some serious needs that like have. There are there are like I got, I got this little list right here. Twelve undeniable human needs. And I read them every day. I look at them every day. You know, make people feel needed and significant. Give them a sense of hope. Give them, uh, make them feel like they're contributing, leaving a legacy. Tell them secrets. You know, those kind of things. Do that. Make that, uh, serve the people. Figure out what the people want. Show them exactly how to get it. You know, of course, abide by the law. You know, if we got to have... You know, if there's like morally subjective people, like, well, can I just do everything all the wrong way and make money? No, you can't do anything like that. Slap people like that. You know, warriors go out there and slap people like that. It's what we're trained to do. So, if you want to be successful in business, serve the people. Not only will the people bless you, but God will bless you and share you on. If you go out there and you are serving your audience. If you are serving the people, if you're going out there and saying, okay, I'm going to love that guy. I'm going to love his, I'm going to come up to him and I'm going to figure out exactly what he needs. So you go up to that person and you understand, all right, I know what he needs. We, we just need we get expert burgers. <laughs> Dave. He did look scary. He did. First, he looked like an axe murderer. I was like, I will never do business with that guy. And I come to find out, I was like, hey, we're kind of the same, right? Now, now everybody's going to be asking me, are you an axe murderer? Uh, you say no. Okay, so not only will you bless the people when you serve them, you will bless God. You know, Jesus really has some foundation that it's just, it is better to serve because when you're serving people, you're actually helping, you're, you're giving back to yourself. It is better to bless than to receive. Look at how selfish people are and they're unsatisfied. Look at how selfish people are in the business world. You go out there and you're watching, look, look at the spam groups. Does anybody serve people on those? Only the workshop warriors that's who serves the people they go out there and they provide the value that's it everybody else like that's the 99.9 .9 billion percent that is just don't know what they're doing but we got it we got it 
All right, so you've got to generate leads like fishing. You, oh man, this is so good. This is all right. This is this is so good. I love this. I can resonate with this. You have got to generate leads like fishing. Try different bait, different fishing spots, but find the master fisherman. Okay, so I work with people. This is all they do is fish. This is all they do. Hello, Susan. Great to have you on here. Shmail and Shane's off. Yeah, you're funny. Oh man, this is this is great. So this is why we this is why we this is why we this is why we make up our own videos. We do the live videos live. I'm on Facebook, baby. So in order to generate leads, you gotta do it like fishing. You gotta try different bait. You gotta try different fishing spots. But you have to find the master fisherman. I, <laughs> I tell you what, I work with, I have a good friend who took me fishing at night. And he brought me to a place that I, I have, I, I've never been. And he was teaching me all this knowledge that like I would never have, I, I would never have known. He was teaching, he was throwing down the knowledge. And he, and he, I was like, dude, I've never caught, uh, I have never caught a saltwater fish before. And I actually, we went blue fishing and I caught uh, 10 blue fish that night, but I lost an additional 10 because there were thousands of these fish, thousands of them. Thousands and thousands, and they were literally, they were literally jumping out of the water because this master fisherman, he knew it was going to happen, and he called it. He said to me, he said, when the water is like super calm, watch this. He's like, watch this. It's going to be tar it's totally dead right now. Right, watch this. So he was saying, the water is, it, and it's like 11 o'clock at night. The water is still as could possibly be. And he says, when it starts to, when the wind starts to blow, and I was like, you sound stupid, man. I was like, you sound really weird, but you're the master fisherman, so I'm not going to say anything. So he's like, when the water start, when the wind starts to blow, like right across the water, He's like, watch, you're going to see thousands of fish just start jumping out of the water, and it's just going to be a frenzy of fish. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then all of a sudden, he's like, he's, and then the wind starts blowing. He's like, okay, pay attention, pay attention, watch what happens. And then poof, all these thousands of fish just like literally start jumping out of the water. I was like, you prophet, how did you know that? And he was, it was just, it was hysterical and amazing to see. I was so amazed. I'm like, and it went on and on and on and on. And it went on for five straight hours. These fish were jumping out of the water. And there were these mini, like, like bait fish. There were just, um, I think they were called bunker fish. They were just these tiny, they were these fish that looked like a, like a fat shiner. Kind of skinny, but like, like, like fat. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, so he, uh, he, we were, they were out there, millions, tens of millions of these tiny little fish and these big, and these blue fish, probably about like, man, probably like, I'm trying to get in the screen here. Really big. I actually have blue, I still have the blue fish, like in my freezer. Uh, I better eat that. Tastes like plastic if I don't eat it. But anyway, we were catching all these fish, and it, we were actually we were pulling the fish in, and we were hooking the little fish. We, there were so many of them, man. It was it's amazing. But like, but that is just oh, you know, you've got to generate leads like you're fishing. You know, you you cast it. <laughs> Pat Patterson were on here. He would probably say something like this. Like, I got my fishing rod, I cast it right in the water, I reeled it in, I didn't catch anything. That was a scam right there. I can't believe it. I'm going to go get my $600 back from this rod. Well, this is a scam. 
and then he preaches, oh, I made a YouTube video about how fish is a scam, right? <laughs> oh, man. Got to love it. You got to try different bait. You got to try different fishing spots. You got to find the master fisherman, i.e., this guy, i.e., the workshop warriors, the people you've been following that are saying, I'm getting results. Those are the people you got to hang out with. Duh. Those are the people you have got to connect with. You know, you want to learn how to do SEO, you got to go to somebody who knows what SEO is, right? I just did a thing on YouTube tonight about how to get your page, your YouTube videos to rank on the first page, to get it close to the number one spot. You know, one video I had it on the very first spot on the first page. Another video I had it on like the fourth or fifth one. And that's been on there for like a year. You know, you gotta you gotta find the master fisherman. Wow. So okay. Okay, so we got another one. So do not take this is why you listen to this is why you listen to veterans in like the sales and marketing world. Do not take lessons from losers. <laughs> Do not take lessons from losers. Don't do it. You know, you know why do people why, uh, why do people do business? Uh, wait, wait. Why do people do business with people? Right? Okay. You know, people have to believe in you. Okay. So why do people do? Okay. So I, I was like throwing, I'm mixing it up, mixing it up right there a little bit. Why do people do business? with other people, right? People have got to believe in you. They've got to, they gotta believe in you. They gotta sit on these webinars, on these Facebook Lives uh, for 32 minutes, you know, and comment and have a good time. Oh man, love it, good stuff. Yeah, um, people have got to believe in you. They have got to like you. You know, if you don't like me, you don't like my style, you don't like my, uh, you know, whatever, you don't like my hair, put it in the comments, right? You know, if you don't like the way that my jacket's all wrinkly right now, put it in the comments. It will boost my ranking. It will boost, it will activate the Facebook uh, algorithm, and more people will come out and they'll say they don't like my shirt or they don't like the background. And then all of a sudden people will just, and then I'll find the one person who actually does like me. So, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. So then they've got they've got to like you. They have got to trust you. You know, you know without trust you don't have a business. You know they have to understand you. If you're not a good communicator, you will fail. Totally get this. I, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, when I was in high school, I could not make a single friend because I was so like. I was just so bottled up. I was really scared to allow myself to be me. I had one friend who ended up, you know, going off doing his own thing, at, you know, halfway through high school. And then I was by myself again. And then I went off to college, in a biblical college. And then <laughs> I didn't apply myself then. And I still, I still struggled to... I, I actually made a really good friend who I'm still good friends with to this day. And, um, man, I'll tell you what, um, being, I still struggled as a good communicator. And it, you know, I struck, I mean, if you really look at it, I struggled with good communication for a very, very long time. It wasn't until I started to just get so sick of it that I was researching it. I wanted to know. You know, how, how to be a better communicator, how to make people like me, how to make people laugh. And it really just had to just like, well, you got to stop trying to be all bottled up and just be yourself. It's pretty much it. It's pretty much how a lot of the stuff started going away. You cut off people who are just, who are just making you feel miserable. I heard an amazing quote, uh, and it really just, man. I heard an amazing quote from somebody, and I'm trying to remember who it was. But um, uh, it says, "If you dance with the devil, it'll feel you will feel like you're in hell. If you dance with the devil, 
you will feel like you are in hell. Man, we got quotes like all throughout this Facebook Live. There we go. I said it just right. You know. Uh, so if you if you if you're if you're with people who are very poor at building relationships and you know they have horrible communication skills, they're gonna fail and they're gonna teach you how to fail. You know, they said, don't go to the master fisherman. He's all over the place. He didn't catch anything last night. Oh, he's not a fisherman. A real fisherman would know what to do, right? Like, just one cast, one fish. Feed the whole family and save the world. That kind of crap. All right, so how will people believe in you? You've got to believe it yourself. If you don't believe it, they're not going to follow you. You have got to believe it in, you have got to believe in the end result. I truly believe that, you know, if you have a true, genuine faith in your product, service, or opportunity, people are going to be very, very attracted to that. I personally try to attract people to the living God. So I just display my faith and I say, I believe in it. And that's what I believe. And people say, well, I don't believe in it. And I say, Okay, let's get back to work. I have people that I work with that are like that. That well, I, that I just blatantly say, like, yeah, I have, I have faith in the living God. It's just my genuine belief. And then they say, well, I don't believe in that sort of stuff. I say, okay, let's go fix something. And we go and fix something. And we talk about Star Wars. Or we'll talk about, you know, the Millennium Falcon or Back to the Future or something like that. And then we'll just go back into those We'll find a common ground and we'll get back to work and we'll fix something or something. You know what I'm saying? So, man, all right. So we're we're winding down on all all these things, and um, people do things for their benefit and not yours. You know, this is one of the reasons why leaders definitely fail. This is one of the reasons why companies fail. This is the reason why a lot of people just they don't get it is that people, the customer, is only doing things for the benefit of themselves and not you. They don't care about you. They don't care about your, you know, whatever you're going through. They just want their, their you know, their cocoa latte with extra cream, with the whipped cream on, I don't know. They just, I don't know what they sell to kids these days. But, um, so another thing Peter was saying, is have a two minute elevator pitch. So if you are in an elevator with your with your perfect prospect and you have two minutes to connect with that guy, he says, so what do you do? You know, we got two minutes, what do you do? And you connect and you figure out that you're on the same wave, like have a two minute, have a two minute um, pitch to them. Now, what I'm discovering is that Two minute videos actually rank really, really well on YouTube. Two minute videos. So if you have a two minute video and you're putting it out there, that it actually will, people will engage with it. Unlike these 40 minute videos that I'm actually on, which I'm amazed that it, I didn't even realize it's been going on that long. Oh man. All right. And, um, all right. So why do you need automatic braking system in your car? It allows you to steer your car when you need to brake hard. You know, that's a, that's, that's a point he was making. I don't know if that's another, uh, if that was maybe starting another point. Um, you never want to hire people uh, who do not like you and do not please you. That's a really good one. Another big reason why leaders fail is that they hire people who just flat out don't like them. They don't care about them. They don't care about the vision. They don't care about the, you know, the opportunity. They don't care about anything. You know, don't hire people who don't like you. You know, it was uh, it was a billionaire. He's a Christian. Can't think of his name right now. I'll remember it when I go to sleep. I'll wake up and be like, oh, that was his name. <laughs> but um, oh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he was talking about you want to hire people who have just, like a lot of passion and have a lot of drive. And they're just, they're really intelligent people. 
You want to hire people who agree with your vision. You want to hire people. You want to work with people who agree with the direction of your business and where it's going. Don't hire people who don't like you. Don't sign up people who don't like you. I approve people. I make sure that they like me. I make sure, like, yeah, I'm thinking about doing business with you. Why? Uh, why? Why? Why do you want to get on my team? You know, don't be boring. You know, if you want to be boring, okay, but at least you gotta like me. If you don't like me, I ain't doing business with you. Just saying. You know, people are looking for teachings. They are looking to be taught. They are looking to be trained. They are looking for, um, man, we got these troopers on this hangout here. I'm going to call it whatever, you know. On this whatever hangout, we got three people that have been on, like, the entire time. It's got to be Katie, Shumela, probably Jazz. Somebody else, I don't know. Oh, man. All right, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, okay, so why were 20% of the people successful? All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you that question. Why were 20% of the people successful? How come 20% out of the 100% are successful? We'll see you drop a comment. You drop it like it's hot, right? Drop it like, drop the comment like it's hot. All right. So what do you think? What do you think? Why are 20% of marketers successful? It is because they obey their mentors. That is why. Man. Ah. Oh. So you have to totally obey your mentors. They research people, and they have, and they all have a grateful attitude. Big one, man. Big one. Uh, I, um, you know, let's read. Let's let's read your few more comments. Uh, it took me forever to get clear, though. Wow, Katie Joel. I don't even know who this Joel guy is you're talking about. Uh, I have a bunch of examples. Yeah, I'd like to say buy. Oh, I'd like to buy a vowel. I don't know what that means. Well, anyway, so why were 20% of the network marketers successful? Why are 20% of uh, brick and mortar businesses successful? Why are, you know, other people um, successful? I'd like to buy a vowel. What is the vowel for? I don't I don't get it. Buy a vowel. This isn't, Je not Jeopardy, uh, Wheel of Fortune. I ain't spinning nothing. All right. So, uh, the reason why 20% of people are successful is because they obey their mentors. Okay. Real men read the instructions, I guess. So uh, they research successful people, and they all have in common is a grateful attitude because they obey their mentors. You know, it's because they just flat out obey their mentors. You want to be around people who make you feel special. You want to be around people who make you feel special. You know, like you, you don't, you do not want, I'll say this again. You want to be around people who make you feel like you are the most specialist person. You know, not like you have some special need but you are a special person. You are unique. You are gifted. You are talented. You know, you have a desire. You've been on this hangout for 45 minutes. You people are amazing. I mean, I'm like, I'm almost on an hour with this hangout on this live webinar, whatever it is. Uh, you know, I never, I gotta get it right. And, uh, okay. So I think I got to the last one because I wrote 10. Um, they don't have a day-to-day -day strategy for success. It just is so, you know, it's kind of like when you read the book of Proverbs and you're reading it and it's just like so plain English, you know, when you're, in your, when you're reading Proverbs, it's just flat out like just, you know, plain, simple. It's almost over simple. It's almost over simple. But you think people would have a day 
today strategy for success and they do not. You know, you got to have a plan. You must have a plan. You must wake up every day and know what you're going to do. This is exactly why I couldn't get any kind of commissions. This is why I couldn't build my list. This is why I didn't know what to do. Because I just didn't have a plan. I didn't have a plan. I was just going. I'd get out of work. I'd sit in front of my computer and then I'd figure it out. And by the time I figured it out, it was really late. And I was really tired. And then I'd be like, oh. It's like a hangout. It's over 30 minutes. You should share this on your hangout also. I think I will. I think maybe uh, next week I'll, I'll uh, I will, I, I actually like this. I loved it. I looked at Peter Vaughn's notes and then I said to myself, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. I'll, I'll go over this again. I'll make it more entertaining. Maybe I'll have fireworks going off in the back. A blazing campfire. I'll have dramatic music playing in the background. All of that will be really good. So they don't have a day-to-day -day strategy for success. Uh, you got to have a plan. you got to wake up every single day, and you must know exactly what to do. You must know what to do. At the end of the year, what will you have? You know, how much will this cost you? Write out your goals and visualize your goals, your affirmations, self-talk. I am successful. I am unique. I am blessed of God. Um, as long as you obey him. <laughs> People want to do business with me. They talk success. Uh, you want to talk success like back into yourself. You do want to talk success back into yourself. I am going to buy that Jeep in one shot. I am going to get rid of my debt on my uh, my RV. I'm going to get rid of my student loan debt. And I refuse. I utterly refuse. I actually tell myself this. I say it out loud. I say it every single day. And I mean it. I will never come to the place where I have to borrow money ever again. I will never borrow money to buy things that I need. That is just me. And somebody said, well, you think you're special? And I said, yeah, because I ain't doing it. I'm going to figure out what to do. So, so go out there. You know, touch five people's lives. Go out there and touch five people and touch their lives. Touche. Make an impact. You know, feel them. Hit them. Make them feel. Like they are important, you know. Go out there and get those, um, you know. Uh, man, it, oh, oh, it just keeps going on. Okay, so that. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna cut it out at that because uh, the bond notes keep going. It keeps on, keeps on going. Oh, I can't do it. So anyway, we're gonna cut this out, and I'm gonna throw this on. Um, I'm gonna throw this on my uh, on my YouTube channel. If you want more information on that, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can uh, get access to my YouTube channel. You can go ahead and subscribe to that uh, for more uh, amazingly uh, brilliant humor. I don't talk about anything productive. I just go out and have fun. So uh, if that's something you want to watch, go ahead and do that. All right, thanks, Katie. Shumela, Nettie, and everybody, Jazz. Man, we got a hundred comments on this video. That is so cool. So love you guys. Thanks for all your support. I hope you had fun, took lots of notes, and uh, get some sleep. Night. God bless you. God loves you. God, the living God really cares for you. Bye now.